What's going on? This is Dylan with Dylan Talks Tone. How's it going? So today we're going to talk about pickups. We're going to talk about the wire that goes in the pickups. And we're going to talk about poly versus nylon. Does the actual type of wire insulation make a difference when you're making your pickups? If you are a super traditional person who wants to believe that there is, you might not like this video very much. Spoiler alert. Hey, before we start this video, do me a favor. There's a couple of links in the description of this video. One to Skillshare uh, for how to solder stuff. Definitely check that out. One to DistroKid if you are a musician trying to get your music out into the world, check that out. And click on those links and check that stuff out. And uh, do that for me if you would, because supporting the companies that support Dylan Talks Tone is one of the ways that I get to do this and make these videos. So if you would just check that stuff out, uh, those links below, that would be killer. All right. Uh, let's talk about some nerdy stuff. I brought notes because this is super technical. Before you jump in the comments and be like, you're not using the technical enough terms, the bottom line is we want to make this understandable for as many people as possible. And we're going to try to put this in terms that people can relate to. However, everything that I'm telling you today can be found on the internet. There are These numbers are real. This is actual math and actual science. I'm not making this up with any opinions. Be nice to each other, but discuss it in the comments if you like. This is a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. So let's get right into it. In order to understand the difference between if a wire... Uh, insulation type plain enamel versus poly for example makes a difference in a pickup we need to understand the basic principles of how a coil works and this is any coil this could be an RF coil this could be a transducer coil and we're going to talk about why that's different in a minute the number of turns on the coil so if you have a strat pickup with 7300 turns you have a p90 with 10,000 turns you have a humbucker with two coils with 5,000 turns the amount of turns of wire on the coil is going to make a difference in the inductance now we want to talk about inductance here because inductance is the overall efficiency and working cap capability basically potential of that pickup okay and that's going to affect the frequencies that it can work in and stuff but inductance is the important thing you notice that we're not going to talk about resistance a whole lot here um, because that really doesn't have a whole lot to do with it. Inductance is the final number that we're going for that shapes every number of turns on a coil. Number one, the coil height. Uh, let's say a let's say a Telecaster bridge pickup. You could put 10,000 winds of uh, wire on a Telecaster bridge pickup, but that wire, the height of it, is taller than a P90. So that's why it sounds different because it's gonna, well, that's one of the reasons, uh, because the coil height is different. So a Telecaster bridge pickup is this tall and a P90 is maybe this tall, right? So the same amount of winds, you could do that, but they would sound different because the coil height. The other thing is the coil area. So if you look down the end of a pickup and you divide uh, the cross section of that the area so it could be same same exact example for different reasons uh, let's see you could put 10,000 winds on a fender jazz bass pickup or 10,000 winds on a telecaster pickup and they would sound different because it's distributed along the coil differently and you have different surface area of the end of the coil if that makes sense so area of the coil height of the coil number of turns major, major factors in how a pickup sounds and how the final inductance. So let's just break that down for a second. The taller the coil this way, the less inductance. The smaller the surface area of the end of the coil, if you were to cut the coil off and look at that, the smaller of that surface, the less inductance. The number of turns, the less turns, the less inductance. It all has a factor. Now, the other thing that's kind of less to do with it in guitar pickups, because we all we use the same thing most of the time, is core material. But I'll give you an example. So core material, uh, if we put steel cores in the middle of the pickup, that's going to have less inductance than putting a magnet in the middle of the pickup. That has more a lot to do with the efficiency of the magnetic field and less to do with the actual coil itself. The core material in a guitar pickup plays less into it 
when you're talking about other styles of coils, like an air coil um, for noise reduction or RF versus putting a ferrite coil, like that sort of stuff that doesn't really apply to guitar stuff, then it really starts to matter. So, so far we've just talked about the, basically the dimensions of the coil of the pickup, making the most difference in the inductance and the efficiency of the pickup. And ultimately for our purposes, what the pickup sounds like. Makes sense. What does this have to do with wire? Well, the bottom line is, remember that the dimensions of this thing are what are making the difference. So one of the other ways that we can change the dimensions of the coil, thus changing the efficiency of the coil, thus changing the inductance of the coil, thus changing the tone of the coil, is the space between the wine, gap between the turns. You'll see this a lot, and if you look at a lot of engineering articles, like I do, uh, you'll you'll hear the term gap between the turns, and basically that just means we have uh, we have a thicker insulation and it creates a gap between the turns versus a thinner wire insulation that has less of a gap between the turns when you put two wires next to each other. So an example of this would be heavy form far wire has a very thick coating on it. Plain enamel wire has a very thin coating on it. So uh, one Stratocaster pickup wound exactly the same way with plain enamel wire will sound differently from heavy form var wire because if the wire diameter is exactly the same, 0 0.0025 inches thick, uh, in my last video I said 0 0.0028, I was wrong, it's 0 0.0025, I went back and looked, I apologize and make that correction now. 0.42 gauge wire, if it's good wire, the nominal, dis the nominal thickness of it would be 0 0.0025 inches thick. The insulation on a heavy form var wire would be 0 0.0004 inches thick. On a plain enamel wire, it would be 0 0.0002 inches thick, so exactly half. So you have single build plain enamel, and you would have double build heavy form var heavy form bar, okay? So that would, you would have a thicker insulation. That would change the gap between the turns, and if you use the, the same amount of turns on a coil, let's say 10,000, you would be basically changing the dimension of the coil, which would change the tone. That's why heavy form bar sounds different than plain enamel. Boom, there we go. Well, guess what? I use single build poly nylon wire. I don't use plain enamel unless I'm doing like a restoration on an old pickup or something. And some of you like more nerd heads will tell me that I'm wrong and say that it sounds different because the insulation is different. So here's where it gets super crazy because most people will say, well, yeah, but the insulation back in the 50s it was different than the insulation now. And Excuse me, I'm a nerd and I have to push my glasses up. It's true because they actually banned some of the chemicals that they put in it because it'll give you cancer. So don't use old wire because it could give you cancer. Okay, so let's just get that out of the way. So let's just use a modern plain enamel that you can buy right now that I can buy from my supplier um, versus a semi single single build poly nylon that I can buy from my supplier. Plain enamel, nylon, 42 gauge, 0 0.0025. Single build, 0 0.0002 insulation. Guess what? they're exactly the same wire dimension. Not one thicker, not one thinner, they're exactly the same. Are they gonna sound the same? Yep, here's why. The only difference that people want to come up with between single build poly and single build plain enamel is the electric permeativity of the insulation in the wire. So they wanna say that poly, the, the insulation loses so okay let's just get into this okay so we're gonna let's talk about relative permeativity basically what it means is you have a wire here you have a wire here you have a gap in the middle and whatever's in between that gap some of it can absorb energy better or worse than others and because of that people think that the insulation type of a wire makes a difference guess what it does however the real name for plain enamel wire is polyamide imide lacquer something 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 okay there's it's a long chemical name if we look at the relative permittivity of that material to give us a baseline the way they measure that is they put a wire here and a wire here they put a vacuum in between and the relative permittivity of the vacuum is one okay uh, for reference water is about 80 alcohol is about 31 there's stuff that goes up into the hundreds okay 
So relative permeativity of polyamide, imide, lacquer, acetal, blah, 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 whatever plain enamel is called, the super long name. Uh, relative permeativity of that material is 2.6. Super, super, super low. Relative permeativity of polyurethane, which is this main ingredient, is 5.5. And you say, ah, I told you, you were right. You were wrong, and I'm right. There's a difference, and I can hear it. Except that you would be wrong because you spoke too soon. Because polyamide, imide, polyamide, Remember, there's a whole bunch of other ingredients that go after that. It's not just polyamide by itself. By the time you add all that stuff in there, the relative permittivity of plain enamel insulation is six to seven. Same thing with polyurethane. Polyurethane, they coat it with nylon and some other chemicals. It ends up being about six to seven. It ends up being about the same, which guess what that means? It's a non-issue. It's a non-factor, non-factor. So I'm telling you right now, I can put single build poly nylon, make it the same color as plain enamel on my pickups all day long, and you will not be able to tell the difference, period. That is the science, and that is it. And people will say, yeah, but that little tiny bit of difference, I can tell the difference. No, you can't. Here's why. A transducer is what a guitar pickup is. A guitar is not a pickup. It doesn't pick up anything, okay? It doesn't, now a radio antenna is a pickup. A radio antenna actually can capture frequencies from outside. It's a coil. It's tuned to do that. It's engineered and tuned to do that. Very, 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 very low tolerance, super high, like really, really high end stuff that needs to find a particular frequency and pick it out of the air. This stuff matters. But when we're taking motion of a string, Putting in a magnetic field and creating an electrical current with it, that's a transducer. That is changing one energy to a different kind of energy. And that is so crude, you don't need all that math. It's so crude in comparison. So people will say, yeah, but a coil is engineered a certain way. Yeah, if you're trying to like find aliens in outer space with uh, you know, an antenna on the top of a mountain and they have to like tune it to find one particular frequency out of all these other frequencies, like this tiny, narrow, 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 uh, tolerance, then yeah, you have to think about all that stuff. But the bottom line is people put way too much into this and guitars are so crude that it just doesn't, it just doesn't matter. A transducer is such a crude instrument in comparison to what all this other stuff is. So it doesn't apply across the same way. Bottom line, after all of that, use whatever you want. Make sure that the thickness of the wire, the thickness of the insulation is the same and you will not be able to tell the difference. Your customers will not be able to tell the difference if you're a pickup builder. Now don't lie to them. Don't put, don't say it's plain enamel and then put poly on there and then like, you know, lie to somebody in a restoration project or something. That would be stupid, but just, relax and use whatever because poly is like a third of the price of plain enamel there's no point you're, you're just wasting your money at that point and that's all i've got to say about it be nice in the comments